Assalamu alaikum there. Welcome to a new episode of How to be a Good Creationist. What we are going to learn today is that in order to be a good creationist is not enough to convince people that a deity created the world. You also have to persuade them that it was your particular deity who did it and that your personal religion is the correct one, as we are about to find out. This is a song about some kids Chris. Lord save us, she's an atheist. The Muslims totally stole the Christian creation story. It was the Christian God who made the world in six days and rested in the seventh. Oh, that's so ignorant of you. You see, in the Holy Quran it says six days, but it's a matter of translation because the word used for day can be used for various periods of time. So a day can mean 50,000 years, which makes a lot more sense because it's kind of stupid to just think that everything was created in just one week. Now hold on a bit, I'm an atheist so I don't believe in that, but for the sake of the argument, if Allah is so powerful, then theoretically he could do it in a week. Told you! Of course he can do it in six days. He's God, he can do anything. Sorry, but that applies to you too. I mean, he's supposed to be all powerful. Why did he need six days? Why didn't he do it in a day? Or even better, why didn't he do it instantly by snapping his fingers? And why did he need to rest anyway? Did God get, like, tired or something? Hey, don't even bother with them, they are both crazy as hell, nobody in their right mind can believe that the world was made in seven days. And if they do, you don't argue with them, because it's pointless. You just take them to a museum and point to some fossils and say, hey, yo, um, fossils, thank you. And then you explain to them about the Titans. Huh? Um, what? You see, nobody really knows exactly how the universe was created, but what we do know is that 75 million years ago, Xenu, the ruler of the Galactic Confederacy, brought billions of his people onto our Earth using spacecrafts. Then he stuck them all around volcanoes and killed them with hydrogen bombs. And who are you again? I am a proud member of the Church of Scientology founded by the brilliant L. Ron Hubbard, who wasn't he like a science fiction writer? What's that got to do with anything? Look, the Bible is very clear. Like I said, God created everything in six days. But a day doesn't have to be 24 hours. It can be a longer period of time. He created Adam from dirt. And from Adam's rib, he made Eve. The souls of the alien people killed around volcanoes came back to life and entered the bodies of humans. And then there was the talking snake. <sighs> Did any of you ever hear about the Big Bang Theory? Nonsense. Gah. The most absurd thing I heard in my life, besides evolution. Wonderful. Guys, we really shouldn't fight over this. The truth is right in front of you. Just hear me out, okay? Islam is the religion of peace. Ugh. Oh yeah, and football is the sport of grace. I'm gonna blow you up to defend my religion of peace. You have no idea what you're talking about. Most Muslims are very peaceful. The women are respected. Uh-huh. That's why our holy book allows men to hit their women if they are disobedient. That is a lie. And even if, well, let's say some Muslims may interpret it that way, let's say, they are only allowed to hit a woman with a miswak, which is like a toothstick, very small. Can I see this miswak? Huh. I don't get how can you follow the teachings of a pedophile. You do know that Muhammad married Aisha when she was 6 years old, and he was 51. That is called misinformation. Yes, he did marry her when she was six, but the marriage wasn't consumed until much later when she grew up. So how old was she then? Nine. But she was a very well-developed girl. Probably. Bah! I don't understand. Why do you hold on to those beliefs so much just because it says so in some book? Because otherwise hell awaits you after you die. Permanent suffering and torment. An endless lake of fire. Burning your flesh again and again. For eternity. Well, I can see you agree on that. But on the other hand, if you do follow God, there will be eternal bliss for you in heaven. Okay, tell me, how is this heaven place? Well, I don't know exactly, but it's eternal bliss. See, your book doesn't even describe paradise properly. In the Holy Quran, it says exactly what awaits you. Everything your heart desires. Any kind of food and drink and fruit you want, inshallah. Wait, how would you experience that with no physical body to beautiful robes and jewelry and perfumes and 72 virgins? Yikes, I don't want 72 virgin noobs. Thank you very much. No, you see that, um, well, this is just for the men. Talk about being sexist. And those 72 virgins will remain like virgins forever? Because if I was a man, I'd much rather get 72 hoes, to be honest. 
Guys, I'm sorry, but you cannot beat what the best Mormons get in heaven after they die. The morons? Uh, no, Miss Hijab 2010. The Mormons. I am a Mormon. So, the ones who get to enter the celestial kingdom get... Are you ready for this? A planet. What? <laughs> My brain hurts. You get to be God over an entire planet that you rule with your wife. And you get to have hundreds of other celestial wives and you populate that planet with your celestial children. You mean to tell me that I will have to share my husband with hundreds of other celestial women that he will have kids with? Well, yeah, but you're still his main bitch. Great, I bet I'll have to do all the cooking as well. I just don't understand how can you guys believe in such ridiculous things that are obvious man-made fabrications. Oh yeah, look who's talking. You're the one who believes everything is here by accident. Wait, I don't... That the universe puffed itself into existence. You believe that monkeys gave birth to humans, like why can't we see that now? Show me the crocodile. I wanna see the crocodile. If there is a creation, there is a creator. Alhamdulillah. Prove to me there's no God. Prove it. Okay, I'm out of here. If you see a watch, there's obviously a watchmaker. They never found the crocodile. This is a song about some kids Chris. Lord save her, she's an atheist. So, what's the deal with you? Oh, I'm agnostic. Basically, I'm not really sure if I know what I'm uncertain about.